starting up at the top of the first shelf. This is my romance shelf, so it mostly has my contemporary romances in a color coordinated order, and then the bottom two shelves are my fiction and classics. So, starting at the top of my romance, we have all of my white romance books. First, we have my Sophie Lark collection. She writes a lot of mafia and dark romances, but they're very fun and fast-paced. Love Contract is our new release. We have the Saints and Sinners duet, and then our mafia books. Right next to that, I have the very long Addicted Calloway Sisters series by Krista and Becca Ritchie. This is a contemporary romance about three sisters, so I thought putting my three little calico critters would be very cute right there because they represent Lily, Daisy, and Rose. And then next to that, we have my other white books. We have the original Icebreaker copy, this mafia romance I got in a subscription box, and then my Kennedy Ryan Hoops series, which is a basketball series. Then I have my TBR jar. I like to use this to help me pick out books to read. Check out my vlog channel if you want to see those videos. And then we just have a few YA contemporary books. I don't read a lot of YA contemporary, but I didn't know where to put them, so I just put them right here for now. And then moving down, this is the next section of my rainbow romance. First, we have Bringing Down the Duke, a historical romance, Out on a Limb. This is one of my five-star reads. I love it. No Shell by Beth O'Leary. Red, White, and Royal Blue. This is on my TBR. I still need to read it. Same with Beacon again. And Pretty Reckless, the next three books. A lot of books on my shelves are unread, by the way. But not Night Shift. This one is super, super cute. It's like a Tudor romance. We have Our Scorching Summer, which is on my summer TBR. Throttled is a F1 romance on my TBR. Then we have Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. I just read my first Abby Jimenez book this month, so I can't wait to dive into that one. We have Ellie Hazelwood's novella collection. The Nanny by Lana Ferguson. This looks really, really good. Hush Hush by Lucia Franco. Another on my TBR. I believe this is about a sugar daddy. And then we have Seeing Double, The Spanish Love Deception. I still haven't read this. I feel like I'm late to the game, but we have the original cover of Love in Other Words. I literally have, I think, three different editions of this book. And I haven't read it yet, so I do I have a problem? Yes. Love, theoretically. Most of my other Ali Hazelwood books are hardcover cover, as you'll see later, but Open Waters on my TBR. The Seven Year Slip we read for my book club last month, and I loved it. 4.5 stars. Take it, Danny Brown was sent to me by a subscriber. Quite a few of these books were sent to me by you guys, so thank you so much if you ever send me a book off my Amazon wish list. This behind the scenes features an ASMR artist I've heard, so that's on my TBR. Part of your world, we have another Abby Jimenez book on my TBR. This one looks like a fun summer second chance romance called Do I Know You? Alone with You in the Ether by Olive E. Blake, another author where I've bought so many of their books and I still haven't read one yet. Need to get on that. Unsteady by Peyton Garand. This is a five star prediction. And a booktube classic, The Love Hypothesis. I think I gave this like a three, three and a half stars. Then we have my gorgeous little book club candle by Homesick. I never light it, I just use it as decoration. It's super cute. And then I have my backup TBR jar prompts because I made way too many prompts for them to fit in one jar. So, moving on to the next shelf. This is the last section of my rainbow romances. So, starting with the blues, we have Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. This is a four-star. Super cute. In a New York Minute, the publisher sent me this. Still haven't read it. I'm so sorry. We have Done and Dusted, as well as Swift and Saddled. This is a small-town romance series I cannot wait to get to. Then we have Seven Days in June. Surprise, surprise, this is actually going to be my book club pick for my Patreon book club in June. Link in bio if you want to, you know, join. It Happened One Summer, another book on my summer TBR. 
my year of rest and relaxation. I feel like this is a booktube classic. Bear Down by Frederick Bachman. I've been wanting to read this for a while. I've heard amazing things, but I'm waiting to read it like in the winter. And then My Sister, The Serial Killer is another book on my TBR. So, Acts of Desperation. This is like an anti-love story and it was so good. The Stationery Shop. This is a historical romance on my TBR. We have It Ends With Us and It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. These are the only Colleen Hoover books besides Verity that I decided to keep on my shelves. So, then we have my Taylor Jenkins Read Collection, One True Loves, After I Do, and Malibu Rising. I still need to read Malibu Rising and After I Do, but very excited for those. Then we have The Song of Achilles, which was another book club pick, and it was five stars, made me cry like a damn baby, loved it. Then we have Circe, which I need to get to because I feel like I'm going to like it even more than The Song of Achilles. Sex and Rage by Eve Babbitt. This is like kind of a classic. I want to read as well as Severance by Link Ma. This is about a pandemic. So interesting, but I'm not sure if I'm like ready for it yet. Then we have If Cats Disappeared from the World. This is a book translated from Japanese that is on my TBR as well as Parable of the Sower. This is a dystopian book that is written in, I think, the 80s or 90s, and it is set in 2024, so high on my TBR. And lastly, Before We Were Strangers, this is a romance that I DNF'd, and I can't decide if I want to give it another shot or not. So, that is my fiction shelf, and then moving on to the last shelf of this particular bookshelf, we have my classics, starting with Wicked by Gregory Maguire. This is my favorite musical of all time, so still need to read the book. Then I have my illustrated edition of Great Gatsby that I got last year. I absolutely love it. It's my favorite classic. I have an Edgar Allan Poe anthology, as well as the book Thief. Two different editions of Little Women. The first is the movie edition, and the second is my original one that I got in a charity shop, and it's from 1948, which I think is pretty cool. Then we have a bunch on my TBR, including Their Eyes Were Watching God, Beloved by Toni Morrison, Pride and Prejudice, and Lolita, Lolita, Lolita. Those are all books on my TBR that I hope to get to. Then we have Play It As It Lays by Joan Didion, which I loved, gave it four stars. I also have her nonfiction, The Year of Magical Thinking, on my TBR. We have The Bell Jar by Miss Sylvia Blath, as well as her unabridged journals that I've been slowly just making my way through. Then we have Slaughterhouse Five, which is on my TBR. I do just love this cover, I must say. Then we have The Old Man in the Sea, probably the worst book I've ever read. My original edition of Great Gatsby, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, one of my favorite book and movie adaptations. The Outsiders, another amazing book movie adaptation, as well as our other book, Rumble Fish, which I still need to read. Then we have Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, as well as Lord of the Flies. Those are my copies from middle school, high school. So I recently upgraded to a nicer edition of Lord of the Flies. This is the Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition. These editions are my absolute favorite. I love them. So I have the Lord of the Flies edition, the Jane Eyre in that edition, and Wuthering Heights, which is not on this shelf, but that is everything.
matchins and lattes, kingdom of stars and shadows, from blood and ash. These are all unread, by the way. I have not read most of these. As well as clockwork, angel, prince and princess, and chain of gold, chain of iron, and chain of thorns, all by Cassandra Clare. And lastly, we have Fear the Flames, which is on my TBR as well. So, that is the first shelf. Moving down, we have more hard covers, starting with my Iron Flame and Fourth Wing hard covers, which I am planning on selling soon. So, peep my Bango books. I have Throne of the Fallen, which is Carrie Maniscalco's adult fantasy debut on my TBR. Babel, also a historical fantasy that's on my TBR. Mistborn, this is going to be my first Brando Sando, so whenever I <laughs> pick it up, we shall see. We have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, as well as Legendborn, and Blood Marked by Tracy Dion. I loved Legendborn, gave it four stars, still need to read Blood Marked. I will. Then we have These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, which is a Romeo and Juliet retelling on my TBR. Then we have Divine Rivals and Ruthless Vows. I love these covers, but unpopular opinion, I did not care for these books, so um, probably will get rid of them eventually. Then we have Feybound. This is a sapphic fantasy romance on my TBR. Red Rising is a popular sci-fi dystopian on my TBR. Tomorrow, Tomorrow, and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Seven. This cover is stunning. I have two books by Chris Abroad Bent. First is The Serpent and the Wings of Night, which I read, but I definitely need to reread. And then Daughter of No Worlds, which I have not read yet, but again, gorgeous covers. Then we have The Secret We Share by Sunny Wright. Sunny is actually a subscriber of mine who sent me a copy of this book, which is so amazing, so go check it out. I'll link it in the description box. And then we have the bunch of Olive Blake books. I am a sucker and I buy all of our covers because they're just so beautiful. We have the Atlas Six in the original self-published version. We have Masters of Death, Masters of Death, and one for my enemy, one for my enemy, and then we have my copy of A Dowry of Blood by S.D. Gibson, this is a Dracula retelling that is on my TBR, and lastly is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. This, I'm not gonna lie, was a cover by. It's stunning. Okay, so that is most of my, like, hard covers on that shelf that are in my fantasy sci-fi. So, moving on to the next shelf, we have some books turned in, like A Curse for True Love, either because I don't like the book or because I want to show off the gorgeous sprayed edges. Then we have the Dark Fever series that my mom gave me to read, and some YA fantasy hardcovers, A Study in Drowning, A Secrets, Oh, A Starlet's Secret to a Sensational Afterlife, Daughter of the Pirate King, Eve of Darkness, I think this is an adult book, but it was given to me by my mother-in-law. This is a author from Utah, which is pretty cool. And The Wrath and the Dawn. So all of those books that I just mentioned are all on my TBR. I have not read any of them. So moving on, we have the Villains Duet by V. Schwab, which I love. We have the Once Upon a Broken Heart series, the Scythe trilogy, which I need to finish, and the Dance of Thieves duology, which is on my TBR. So just a bunch of YA fantasy series. Then we have some YA fantasy singles. Sorcerer of Thorns, The Prison Healer, Iron Widow, Ace of Spades, These Hollow Vows, Damsel, and Graceling. All of those are on my TBR, and I only own like one book in the series. So then we have Ninth House and Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. Loved Ninth House, hated Hellbent. And then Belladonna and One Dark Window are also on my TBR. So, 
Inessa made me and then moving it down to the next shelf. These are all of my large special edition hardcovers. So on the left we have all of my fairy loot editions. Most of these are adult fantasy and most of them are unread. I still need to get to them but they are gorgeous. Then I have my romance booktube box featuring Devil in Dublin, Hawk, Between Hello and Goodbye, and Real. These editions are beautiful. And then next to those, we have my Book of the Month books, my Romance Book of the Month books, which mostly consists of Allie Hazelwood and Ellen Wong. We have a few others like This Spells Love and Ready or Not, which I am really excited to read. But yeah, those are just my various book of the month romances, romances, romances. And then next to that, I have my Christina Lauren hardcover section. So they are a, another local author that I love to support. We have something wilder, my Love In Other Words special edition, which is absolutely gorgeous, and my copy of The True Love Experiment. All three of those are on my TBR. Then we have a sapphic romance for consideration from Aardvark Books. And lastly, my Afterlight special edition romances. For some reason, these are a lot shorter than my other hardcovers, but they're so cute. We have Fangirl Down and The Kiss Countdown by Etta Easton. This is like a fake dating astronaut romance and it looks so good. So, moving on to the last shelf of this shelf, if that makes sense. We have my mystery, thriller, and horror starting with art covers. The Writing Retreat, Don't Fear the Reaper, which is the sequel to My Heart is a chainsaw. Then we have None of This is True by Lisa Jewell on my DBR. Bright Young Woman is a five-star read. The Blonde Identity, I think that's like a thriller romance. The It Girl, Greenwich Park, The Soulmate, and The Last Word. Then we have The Reappearance of Rachel Price. I gave this four stars. Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. This is my favorite mystery thriller of all time, as well as my other Gillian Flynn books, Dark Places and Sharp Objects. Sharp Objects. Then we have the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. This was my first Grady Hendrix, and I gave it five stars. So I also picked up the Final Girl Support Group, as well as another one you'll see in a sec. We have Put to Cemetery by Stephen King Faraday, which I did mention earlier. This is my favorite Colleen Hoover book. The only Colleen Hoover book that deserves rights, in my opinion. Anyways, Stalking Jack the Ripper. This is on my TBR. Then I have a few Freedom McFadden books. We have Never Lie, The Teacher, The Housemaid. And then a bunch of books on my TBR. Wrong Place, Wrong Time. Then we have the Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy. I don't have the first book because I lent it to my sibling, but I love those books. Enchanted Hill. This book looks so interesting. It's on my TBR. If We Were Villains. And the other Grady Hendrix book that I mentioned, My Best Friend's Exorcism. I love this cover so much. So those are all of my mystery thriller kind of books. And that brings us to our little cubicle bookshelf. I got this one from Target, and this is where I store my different series or authors. So, starting at the bottom, we just have a little salt lamp down here next to all of my mom 
genre that I 